scored seven of the first nine points of the second half. What was the difference for you guys coming out of the halftime? Uh, we knew uh, at the end of the first half it was a close ball game, and we knew that we weren't really playing to, uh, to the best of our capability offensively and defensively. So, you know, we just wanted to come out and win that first fin uh, first minute war and come out with a lot of energy. And, um, you know, I just got going early, and my teammates knew that, and uh, they just they just wanted to find me the ball. Did, did you, I mean, you're an unselfish player just by nature. Have you been, have the coaches told you anything or have you felt that you need to exert yourself more than you have previously? Uh, yeah, a little bit. They just tell me that uh, I just need to drive the ball a little bit more. They say I kind of rely on a jump shot a little bit. So, you know, with the new, uh, how close they're calling the fouls now, they just, you know, try to tell me to drive the ball, be more aggressive going to the rim in that way. When, when you got going, you made that first shot or second shot there. I saw you turn to teammates and said, like, you know, this guy can't guard me or get me the ball. Mm -hmm. It felt like you were back in the speed days. I mean, I haven't seen you play like that. Did you feel a lot of confidence? Yeah, I, I definitely did just because, uh, you know, my teammates after I shot, you know, they would tell me stuff to kind of hype me up and stuff like that. So, you know, I just kept going along with it. And, uh, you know, I, the, the rim was wide open for me. <coughs> James, Jalen. Uh, but it didn't really seem to matter because you had the double double. I mean, is that you talked yesterday about preparing and getting ready for the season? Is this what you envisioned for your senior season coming in? Uh, yeah, um, I've worked very hard this off season. Uh, I've instilled a lot of confidence within myself, you know. So a night like this doesn't really get me hyped up, you know. It's something I expect out of myself, and it's something I think my teammates expect out of me as well as a senior leader. Um, but you know, some nights, like Coach Max said, it's not going to be your night every night. You know, tonight would just happen to be my night. You know, and I just hope to be consistent. You know, and uh, and keep it going. You know, Jalen, he's going to have great games along the road. He's a great athlete. You know, it just wasn't his night tonight. But I was glad I can be able to pick up his role and um, just help out the team and get a W. James, you picked up fouls three and four within like ten seconds, and there were still like eight minutes left in the game. What was it like for you to play with those four fouls? And did it change what you wanted to do? Um, no, I didn't change at all. You know, uh, I was still going to be aggressive, but um, you know, just a little bit of adversity. You know, just got to find ways to get around it. And uh, my teammates did a great job with uh, helping me stay out of foul trouble as well. And um, thank God I didn't foul out tonight. Trayvon, last year, you guys come down, throw it in the mat, and then play from there. Is it tougher at times to get a James or a Jalen involved early on in the game when you're not, when the offense doesn't work that way anymore? It's more perimeter or swing oriented. Yeah, sometimes you know uh, we've been working a lot during the practice, you know, trying to get everybody involved. You know, not just how last year we just kind of threw it into Matt and he kind of made the plays for us. So um, you know, we kind of put in a new continuity offense that gets the guards moving. And I think sometimes we forget to look in the post. But uh, you know, coach has been making a point of emphasis to try to you know keep them involved and stuff like that. And you know, as time will come and um, different matchups uh, come about, you know, we'll be able to get the ball into them. But as of right now, as you can see, the first two games, every time we throw it into the post, they're always trapping. So uh, it kind of made it difficult for us to uh, get get the ball in the post. What was going on for either of you guys in the first half? There was about seven minutes where you just couldn't make a field goal. Um, turnovers, their defense, what was it really that kind of was, was holding you up there? Uh, it's basketball. Uh, some shots go in, some shots don't. You know, um, we got there were good shots. They just didn't go in. You know, and uh, we traded buckets with Missouri for a while. And uh, you know, then we came in as a team in a huddle during the timeout. Said, hey, we have to stop trading baskets. And um, I think that's what let our our lead go from seven, I think, to ten, and then further on. So I think that was the main point. I mean, we just we just missed baskets, but that's it. This Missouri team's a lot different. Uh, yeah, kind of, sort of. Um, we knew that they were a fast-paced team, something that they were last year. Uh, they just had a, a new group of guys, a lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores, so, you know, not a lot of veterans and experience, um, you know, but as far as, like, the same game plan, you know, they kind of did the same thing that they did last year, so it wasn't really anything new that we had to get ready for. Uh, uh, I think we're making strides. You know, we're not we're not where we need to be yet. Um, nowhere close. But I think uh, I think I think we're getting there. Each game, you know, we see improvement on defensive end. Uh, coach talks about it, so I just think we just got to keep practicing, and eventually it'll come to us. How comfortable and confident are you in that one three one zone? 
Um, yeah, we're pretty confident in it. You know, we work on it every day in practice. We, we like to be more of a man-on-man -man team, but, you know, it's good to switch it up every now and then, uh, shake teams' offenses up a little bit, and you know, have some confusion out of their offense. But, you know, we're comfortable in it. That's what we practice for. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's come to our benefits in some games. And uh, like tonight, I think it came to a huge benefit. We rebounded very well out of it. And um, we were able to get a lot of steals, too, out of it as well. So I think tonight was a good night for our 1-3-1. Talked about wanting to be that man-to-man -man pack line team. You've played in the system for a while now. What makes it tough at the beginning of the year for a team to, you know, why does it always seem like you guys start a little slow defensively and get better as the year goes on? Um, I mean, just the beginning of the year, you know, uh, I think we have a pretty young team. You know, I've been here for four years. Uh, we have a lot of sophomores and juniors on this team and some freshmen as well, redshirt freshmen who really haven't really played in a big game non conference wise, and they don't know what it's like to. To really feel like, hey, we need, really need to be on our defense mode. Like, it doesn't matter if we're playing Miami, Northwell. You know, every defensive matter counts. You know, because we want to be a top forty defensive team in the country. And every time we don't meet our goals in, in a different game, that puts us even higher on the defensive road ranking. So, I mean, if we're not top forty by the end of our season, then I mean, that's a failure for us. So that's our main goal. Well, it's a good win for our team. I thought in the first half, um, th their guards are really quick. You know, Phillips is, I know he wasn't out on the floor as much as he would have liked and probably uh, Kim would have liked, but he's quick. You know, Wes is quick. Um, Isabel, I mean, those guys really get in the lane. And I'd say down the stretch of the first half, five or six minutes, they went really four small and really drove the ball, either got layups, got fouled. I thought offensively we, we were fine. We actually moved the ball uh, fairly well. They were obviously trapping Jalen, which gave us um, – difficulty because the traps weren't always coming from the same uh, player and so we're going to have to get better at that. Uh, it's a look we may see. But I also thought we missed a lot of layups. Um, we settled for about five or six minutes in the first half. Once we uh, were in the double bonus, we just settled. And we should have put more pressure um, on the referees, on the rim, to, to drive the ball, get hand checks, uh, get in the lane after we earned the double bonus. And in the second half, I thought we did that. And, you know, obviously it helped that uh, Trey really got going. I thought James played, you know, really big around the rim and gave us a post presence. And, you know, his offensive rebounding at seven in a game is, is, is big time. You know, we need to be a team that prides itself on rebounding the ball. And then I thought our mixing in our zone, um, you know, really got separation. I think they went three or four possessions in a row where they either turned the ball over or got a hurried shot. And uh, we got in the double digits. And, um, you know, it's that's probably the storyline. Can you speak more to James? He, he talked recently about how he put all this work in the offseason, knowing Matt was going to be on to be this post presence. Is this one of the best games you've seen him play? Yeah, and, and the thing I would tell you is I don't think it's a one off season. Um, development, you know, if, if I would go back in time, I mean, Rick, you got you guys came to practices. And when James is a freshman, I mean, he, he couldn't he couldn't post a firefly. I mean, he couldn't play with his back to the basket. It was so odd that you had this guy that's six foot nine that didn't have any feel in the post, and and so he's really worked hard. Uh, at that, and maybe in his mind he thought there'd be more of an opportunity, and there will be with Matt being gone. But he's always had a really good touch around the rim. He just could never get the ball down there because his his inability to seal and 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 really be confident in demanding the ball. So it's it's been a four-year progression. It's great to see. I'm not going to anoint him Shaquille O'Neal just yet. He's got a ways to go, but um, we, we need that type of presence in the post. You mentioned Trey taking over there. Begin the second half. Was that good to see someone kind of step up and say, "Give me the ball"? I told our team on Saturday or Sunday, um, you know, our go-to guy is the guy that's open. You know, we have guys that on any given night can get 15 or get 20. Whether it's James tonight, JP, Trayvon, Edmund, Jalen, and when it's not you, you gotta be happy for your teammate. You know, if it's uh, you know the, the, the down look in the lock, oh, coach, I'm good, I'm good. No, you're not. Your body language and your mouth have to be in sync. And, you know, it was really good to see in the locker room. You know, Jalen had a big smile for James. I know he's disappointed in his own play. But I guess I'm circular answering your question, Rick, but, like, it is good to see Trayvon going. And he can't be a guy that just prides himself on making shots. 
he's a total mismatch when we play him um, on the perimeter against a four man. And he started driving the ball. He got to the free throw line. Um, you know, the, maybe the one offensive foul that he got in the first half when he made the bucket was a good call, but he hasn't put himself in that position enough to know how to use his body. We, we need him to be a total mismatch so he can put pressure on the rim. I thought he took a huge step forward tonight. You mentioned the rotating like go-to score, but is it important to have guys willing to do that, though? Absolutely. In situations where you might struggle and get stagnant? Yeah, and I, and I think it's got to come from ball movement. You know, we're, we're not the NBA. You know, this isn't, hey, throw it to this guy in isolation and let him go to work, so to speak. Again, the ball has to find the open man, and our, our team really took a step forward tonight. You know, I was really disappointed with that last game. You know, I've talked all offseason about how, how there's this, this team that plays together, and I didn't see that against Miami. And maybe that's on me because our offense was really chunky and guys were out of their element, but uh, we can't play that way. And tonight, especially in the second half, we didn't. Yeah, we, we, I want our guys to be aggressive. Um, but there's a fine line between aggressive and, and, and making the right play. As Jalen deals with these double teams, where's his confidence? Is he still you know, kind of the same Jalen he was before, just dealing with new problems? Or? I never have to worry about Jalen's confidence. I have to worry about his overconfidence. And we need to feed him the basketball when he's open. Um, we need to feed it from the top and not necessarily from the wing where it's easier to trap. And he needs to, to really understand that the best post move in basketball is no move needed. Your positioning. You catch it deep. Carl Malone made a lot of money, and so did Shaquille O'Neal, posting deep. And Jalen's strong enough, and he's got strong enough hands, and he's got a big enough target and presence that we need to find him in deep post-up positions. On the other side of the ball, you uh, talk about with all, or with all the focus on the fouls. You talk about defending with your feet instead of your hands. The second half, you guys only had six fouls. Do so you think you took a noticeable? Uh, step there. I, I thought we took a big step forward, and in fact, there was about uh, there was one possession where we had three fouls or four fouls, and, and to still not allow Missouri to get in the bonus, the zone helped. Um, the, the zone will help as long as we don't become, you know, reachy in it, and when we just use our length and, and stay in passing lanes. But uh, you know, we, we took a big step forward, especially not committing the, the dumb fouls, the over the back when you're not going to be able to get the basketball. The illegal screen right in front of the referee, whether it's on the ball or off the ball, we didn't have a lot of those tonight. And that, that's a good thing, because those get, that, those get the opponent in the, in the bonus just like any other foul. So um, you know, we've got to be a team that defends without fouling, for sure. I was surprised. I looked up, and there was you know, like 14 fouls with like whatever time was. And I, I couldn't believe we hadn't fouled more. <laughs>